I really like LEGO Technic, as it's easy and simple for prototyping. The main issue that I have is that the motors are too slow for much of anything. That's where 3D printing comes in. I decided that I would create a motor mount for these 20mm metal gear motors from Pololu. I'm Caden here with Kepler Electronics, and let's get started. I've had good experiences using these motors in my Antweight Combat Robot Stompbot, and decided to use the 25 to 1 versions for a little bit of extra speed over Stompbot. These mounts use two M2.5 screws to secure the motor into the mount. I also modeled these shaft adapters, which take the 4mm shaft and adapt it into a LEGO axle format. If you have access to a 3D printer, the files are available for free on Thingiverse, and if you don't have access to a 3D printer, you can purchase the motor mounts and adapters on Etsy. There isn't much to the actual LEGO chassis, so let's get into the speed build. The main board for this project is the Arduino Uno, powered off a 9V battery using this wiring harness. Motor control is done through the Adafruit Motor Shield, an excellent board that I've used in the past. I'm powering this motor shield with this NIM battery purchased from Robot Shop. Since I like having control over my robots with a controller, I'm using a PlayStation 2 controller to control the robot. In contrast to the Zumo robot I built about a year ago, I'm not using an expensive breakout board, but instead soldering the pins on the port to the motor shield directly. Since the motor shield doesn't have any pins connected to its digital I.O., we have to solder in the wires. You could solder pin headers in place if you wanted to, but I soldered the wires in before starting this project. If we number the pins in the connector 1 through 9, we connect pin 1 to digital pin 12 on the Arduino, which carries the data signal. Pin 2 on the connector goes to digital pin 11 on the Arduino, carrying the command signal. Pins 3, 8, and 9 aren't used, so we'll skip over those. Pin 4 goes to the ground on the Arduino, and pin 5 connects to the 5 volt pin right next to it. Pin 6 goes to digital pin 8, carrying the attention signal. I have no clue why I skipped over pins 9 and 10, I just did. And last but not least, pin 7 goes to digital pin 13, carrying the clock signal. If you decide to connect to different pins, you can change them in this line of code here. Speaking of the code, let's get into it. This code works on two libraries, the Adafruit Motor Shield library and Bill Porter's PS2X library. I have links in the description to both of those so you can install them. The code used for this project is a modified version of the code used in my Zumo rover. I couldn't find a lot of resources for how to use the specific libraries, so part of the code is based on a links motion example, and part of it is based on a deleted form example by user Hazard's Mind. These lines of code here dictate the variable names that we use for each motor. If the robot is having trouble moving, you may want to make sure the motors called left and right are indeed connected to the correct ports. Now for the actual control parts of the program. We start with this line of code, which reads the state of the controller every loop. We go into an if statement where we read the joystick and check that it is between two values. The joysticks run from 0 at the bottom to 255 at the top, resting at around 128. You may want to adjust these values to try and get rid of drift, because every controller is slightly different. Inside of the IF, we push the motors either forward or backward depending on the mounting of the motor, and print the result to the serial monitor for troubleshooting. We then have an IF-ELSE that basically does the inverse, and then an ELSE that releases the motors or else they would keep running forever. As always, the code can be downloaded through a link in the description. So, after finishing, how does it drive? Well, not well. 
It's fairly zippy, but it gets stuck on grass and basically anything but thin carpet and flat surfaces. I determined that it was low clearance between the motor mounts and the ground, so I hopped onto lego.com and ordered four of these babies. Extra large sprockets, very new, and a neon yellow. After removing the fenders and swapping out the small sprockets for these, there was a noticeable difference in speed, and in its ability to climb over obstacles. It's very fun to drive, and can go in a lot of places the old version couldn't, even in pretty tall grass. It does get stuck sometimes, but overall it's a whole lot better. To sum everything up, I'm super happy with this little bot. It's surprisingly fast and can go over small bumps in the terrain quite easily. I think that the motor mounts turned out pretty well and I plan to use them in future projects. Thanks for watching, and if you want to see the Zuma rover that I built a year ago, then you can view it by clicking here. And if you want to see Stump bot my one pound combat robot from a guitar pedal, click here. If you can't see the thumbnails, links will be in the description. Thanks for watching, and keep experimenting.